that it is a great pleasure to be here today at this Digital Banking Summit. <clears throat> Before I continue, let me thank the International Center for Strategic Alliance and the KPMG for providing this unique platform to deliberate on pertinent issues on digitization of banking services across the African continent. The choice of Accra for this important event with MasterCard as the lead sponsor underscores the growing importance of Ghana as one of the emerging digital financial services hubs on the African continent. Ladies and gentlemen, digital innovation is creating unprecedented opportunities for Africa to grow its economy, create jobs and transform people's lives. New technologies and businesses models are opening alternative pathways to economic growth in emerging markets and frontier economies, offering opportunities to reshape our lives and improve economic growth. The government of Ghana's commitment to formalize the Ghanaian economy through digitization is laudable. Digitization is a key component of the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, which is firmly anchored on leveraging technology to promote economic efficiency and inclusiveness for accelerated development and poverty reduction. Indeed, the president has shown keen interest and remains committed to building an inclusive modern society. This drive has seen the rollout of several digital initiatives such as the Digital Property Addressing System, the National Biometric ID Cast, which will be linked to the government agencies to help ease identification and processes and promote integrity and efficiency in business transactions. We are also witnesses to the tremendous impact of digitization of the financial sector. Ghana's progress in migrating to the electronic payments has been phenomenal. In less than a decade, we have increased the number of financially included persons from 41% of the total population in 2014 to 58% in 2017. And most of the jump emanated from mobile money patronage. For instance, the volume of mobile money transactions jumped by more than 40% from 982 million participants to 1.4 billion transactions between 2017 and 2018. With the advent of technology, conservative banking operations has given way to dynamism and competition as innovative financial services and products are constantly being churned out. Currently, banks are not only competing amongst themselves for financial services, but also with non-traditional providers, such as financial technology companies, the fintechs. These developments raise important issues in, on banks, on banks' business models that will appropriately deal with the increased level of, levels of competition in the industry. Faced with these challenges, banks are adopting collaborative strategies and leveraging on opportunities to partner new payment service providers or existing players in the delivery of financial services. In the mobile money space, financial technology companies, the fintechs, banks, mobile money operators have collaborated to introduce value-added services such as digital credit, savings and investment, online payment platforms, unstructured supplementary service data, USSD, mobile banking services, quick response codes, point of sale services, termination of inward remittances into mobile wallets or bank accounts, and agency banking services. Fintechs have also partnered with insurance companies to deliver digital insurance products to the underserved. Indeed, digitization provides great potential for the banking sector to offer products and services that hitherto was not regarded as feasible. However, the transition to a digital economy requires reorientation of the sector to meet consumer demand. Ladies and gentlemen, it is against this background that the chosen theme of digitizing of the banking sector and route to a cashless Africa is deemed appropriate and timely as the continent seeks to harness potential of digital technology to achieve a cash light agenda. In the pursuit of this agenda, let me draw on Ghana's experience and highlight some important elements of the country's strategy towards financial inclusiveness and cash-like transactions. Over the past 15 years, 
the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System, which is GIPS, a subsidiary of the Bank of Ghana, in collaboration with other payment service providers, have made enormous investments in the payment system infrastructure to provide a platform for digital payments. Among others, the payment system infrastructure has also created as an integrated and interoperable retail payments ecosystem, which includes check code line clearing with truncation, automated clearing house for direct debit and credit transactions, an instant retail payment system, mobile money interoperability, and the recently launched hybrid card, which has consolidated the e-switch and the Ghana link cards to provide convenience to customers. Mr. Chairman, for the payment system to operate effic efficiently, it must be subjected to strong legal and regulatory frameworks to provide certainty to all stakeholders. In this regard, the Bank of Ghana initiated the process that led to the passage of the Payment Systems and Services Act 2019, Act 987, to provide an enabling regulatory regime for digital payments. For all intents and purposes, the Act seeks to promote innovation in the design and delivery of payment products and services by widening the scope of payments industry to fintechs and engendering competition. It is expected that fintech innovations will deliver products that meet the needs of all stakeholders, whether banked or unbanked and underserved, to attract them into the digital payment space. Also, a proportionate regulatory regime, and the emphasis here is on proportionate regulatory regime, has been adopted to promote fairness in regulation and accommodate different payment service providers. The quest for cashless payments is gradually shifting consumer interfaces from the manual environment to cyberspace. Alongside this transition, there has also been an increased spate of complex cybersecurity threats, which is posing risk to the cashless agenda. The Bank of Ghana has therefore issued a cybersecurity directive for compliance by banks and payment service providers to build a robust and resilient uh, digital ecosystem. To further accelerate the digitization process, stakeholders must work collectively to promote merchant acceptance of digitized financial products and services, with particular emphasis on lower tier merchants such as small and micro enterprises. The next key area is enhancing public confidence. Despite the, success, the successes achieved so far, some consumers still lack awareness and confidence in electronic payments. In this direction, the various stakeholders are undertaking continued consumer education and financial literacy to build confidence and help in fraud reduction. GIFs and stakeholders in the payments industry are also building a fund to support consumer education. Also, on a regular basis, payment service providers are educating the public on how to avoid scams in the use of newly deployed payment products and services. The Bank of Ghana is fully committed to the cash light agenda, with ties, which ties in with the government's agenda, digital economy agenda. So far, we have seen the introduction of the biometric national identification system and the digital addressing system, which are all supportive for our, of our quest to drive digitized financial transactions. As a central bank, we will continue to work with all stakeholders to ensure the successful implementation of these initiatives. Of course, there will be challenges, but with firm commitment, we will eventually reduce the dominance of cash in transactions and improve the efficiency and the security of payments for a more inclusive society. Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, let me note that the future of banking services is digitized and it brings opportunities as well as challenges. We can harness digitization to promote transactional efficiency in the delivery of financial services, as well as scale up and broaden financial assets to all segments of the society. Together, we must leverage on these opportunities to deliver financial inclusion across our various countries and, and, and on the continent at large. I believe that these issues will form the basis for the panel discussions and focus sessions at this two-day summit. 
I wish you all a fruitful deliberation and thank you very much for your attention.